These are the Unreal AR glasses, and these are probably the coolest piece of technology I own. Now, I've been wanting these things for a while, uh, ever since I heard about them a year or two ago, but they've never been made accessible to places like South Africa, where I live. But now they are available on Amazon. So these are available on Amazon for about 7,500 Rand, which is like $400. Uh, which are reasonably priced for how advanced these pieces of technology is. The issue is import fees. Import fees are crazy because it takes something that's $400 and makes it $500. Or something that's 7,000 Rand makes it 8,500 Rand, which is, which is, it, it's a difference between passable and expensive. And yeah, it makes it very difficult for technology enthusiasts in other places of the world to try and be first adopters because Import fees are just ridiculous. And we all know why import fees are there, right? It's, it's the man. Man trying to keep a brother down. And but no, seriously, basically the main feature of these glasses, of these AR glasses is a 201 inch screen, which is about 3,840 by 180 pixels. It's literally IMAX on your face, which is crazy, which is amazing. Now these are basically what Google Glass should have been before you people bullied them and made them cower because they do have versions that look similar to this but are used for enterprise businesses. The other cool thing you may notice is that these glasses actually look pretty cool. They're not as bulky as you expect AR glasses to look, uh, a lot smaller than you'll get for virtual reality glasses. And the big reason for that is that there's no battery. It uses the device battery that is connected to via this braided USB cable with it connected to a somewhat regular phone, you could get up, up to five hours streaming in air cast mode. The other cool features about these glasses are these two open ear speakers, and they're actually really good. As opposed to these view smart glasses that do have two open ear earphones, but they suck. They also have dual microphone arrays, echo canceling, noise cancellation, beam forming, speech enhancement, head tracking, and the controls on these glasses are actually a screen on and off button, the brightness adjustment, and it has accelerometer, a gyroscope, and a proximity sensor, which is exciting features to have, especially as a developer. The unboxing experience was great. As soon as you open the box, you get this really cool carrying case. Very modern, and it does protect your glasses really well. In the box, you get a detachable braided cable, prescription lens frames, three nose pads, the case, and cleaning cloth. Now, it's very difficult to describe how cool it is wearing these things to have a 201 inch screen right in front of your face, which feels like you're in IMAX cinema wherever you go, and performs a lot better in dark rooms. But to help out in rooms that are very well lit, you get this really cool cover that blocks the screen in your face, so you can focus more on the actual AR screen that you get to see. Now I'm gonna talk about a lot of the issues I had with these glasses, as cool as they are. Um, and these are probably issues that a lot of reviewers would not talk about, especially because they uh, are in areas that are kind of tailored to be first adopters of new technology. And also like some problems that bespoke to me, starting with my vision glasses. I need glasses to see properly. And what they do is they do provide these really nifty uh, lenses that you can take to your uh, nearest optometrist so they can fit that in with your prescription. Uh, but the issue is that Going and getting prescription lenses are actually quite expensive and inconvenient. And obviously it's not their fault. There's only so much that this company can do about people that cannot see really well. Uh, it's just annoyance. Uh, and, and to get prescription glasses, it takes about two weeks to just get them ready or filled out. And in the meantime, for me to actually use these glasses, I have to actually wear them all over my current glasses like so. Uh, and it's not the most uncomfortable, but it does get a little bit uncomfortable if you wear them for a while, especially if they are pushing in the ear frames or frames of your glasses. And you can only wear them with certain types of glasses. Like I couldn't wear them with these glasses that have a thicker frame, which is difficult to do. If there's a will, there's a way, but it's not the most comfortable feeling to do so. The other issue I experience is that the app that's supposed to function with these glasses, the Nubia app, it's not available in this region. It's not available in most regions, uh, which is sucky, especially when you want to be a first adopter and build applications that can help a lot of people or just build cool things involving AR. Uh, you can't do that because that app is not available in certain regions. 
Um, but what's really cool is that the Samsung DeX application, which turns your phone into a kind of computer, uh, works really well with these glasses. So that's the thing I've been using it mostly with on my phone. You can get the app by downloading an APK file and downloading it onto your Android device. But I don't know if it's just the Android experience or all the phones experience that the Nubia app is not that great. Like the air casting is cool, but actually using the app's capabilities, not that user friendly and not that fun to do. It's very janky to say the least. So uh, I prefer to use the air casting when I'm using it on my phone. The other biggest problem is that there's no Windows support, right? So Windows has 70% of the worldwide market in terms of desktop uh, operating systems. So it doesn't make sense for them to only cater for Apple devices. Uh, it feels very, very focused on the Western market, which limits innovation, which limits the, the, the one to actually try and build cool things involving these glasses. So I don't know whose strategic decision was to just focus on Mac users, but it's purely focused as someone that only focused on the US market, which 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 it's probably okay for the short term, but not so okay in the long term. Um, so there is applications you can get that can kind of help and assist with running these glasses on Windows, but the fact that it's not made by the company itself is is a huge loss and misstep. Uh, they did say that they are providing Windows support eventually, but they haven't given a specific date. And yeah, these are the main issues that I faced with kind of using these glasses and a lot of people in the world will face uh, high import fees, um, no Windows support, uh, the app won't be available in a lot of regions and having to get lenses for these glasses, uh, which is an additional cost. But even with all these drawbacks, I still think these glasses are the coolest piece of tech I own. Uh, they're really cool, very innovative. I want to use them when I go to work because we have to go back to the office now. Uh, and just programming on these glasses is actually pretty cool. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of these glasses. If you would wear them, if you would drop them, uh, let me know how fly I'm looking. <laughs> uh, and yeah, thank you guys for watching and peace.